Hi everybody, Paul here, and I'm here with Nicolette and our special guest, Opie. And today is a very special day for Opie because tomorrow is International Vulture Awareness Day. And it's really, really important that we understand how important vultures are to the ecosystem. Um, they're the animals that are out there, they clean up the wild, they take care of all the stuff that's out there that might just be sitting around on the side of the road or out in the forest. They eat uh, carrion, so basically deceased animals. Um, which is kind of gross, but it's a necessary thing. Uh, because if those animals were to sit on the side of the road or just sit in the forest, they can spread disease. So that's one of the reasons that vultures are so important. They actually take care of disease. They, they, they control it, they get rid of the uh, things that it might um, kind of foster in or live in. And the one really neat thing about these guys is their stomach acid is so strong that it can take care of any bacteria or any diseases that they might swallow. So they don't get affected by anything that might linger in that carrion that they're eating. Um, so turkey vultures especially. Whoop, sorry. So Opie is a new member to our animal ambassador team. So he's kind of getting used to uh, being on film. I don't think he's actually ever been on camera before. So he might be a little bit nervous. But Nicolette's been working with him for a long time. Um, he's only about three years old and he's been here for about a year and a half. Um, so he's still getting used to everybody, but he knows Nicolette and he's comfortable around her. Um, he likes hanging out with her. Um, but one of the reasons that he's here is he's a non-releasable rehab animal. And what that means is he got hurt out in the wild and you can see his left wing is kind of held up a little bit there. Um, and they, you know, they found him out there and they tried to fix him up. Uh, but unfortunately he can't really fly well enough to uh, survive on his own out in the wild. So he stays here and he gets to hang out with the Nicolette and he gets to see you guys and um, he gets to educate people about vultures and just how cool and how important they are. Um, so you can find turkey vultures around here in the summertime. It's getting a little bit chilly so they might have started moving out of the area. Uh, but you can find turkey vultures all over the Americas just in general. Um, so these guys can be found from the southern part of Canada all the way down to the tip of South America. So down throughout Mexico and Brazil and just everywhere. Uh, they're the most widespread, most prevalent vulture species in the Americas. And they're pretty well adapted to living in all sorts of different environments. So you can find them in mountainous regions. You can find them around here in kind of the plains areas. And you can find them in the forests um, and the, like I said, the edges of deserts. Um, they're really well adapted, but again, they don't really handle our winters very well. So they, he would, you know, they would fly a little bit south uh, during the winter from here, but kind of the middle of America, um, from the middle of the United States on down, they stay there year round. Um, so they don't really migrate in Mexico or South America. They stay there all the time. Oh, I think he's, he might be getting ready to spit out the color there. <laughs> um, how heavy is he? So uh, as with a lot of birds of prey and other large birds like these guys, they actually are a lot lighter than they look. So he's about three and a half pounds. Um, so a lot of times we ask people that we ask people to uh, guess how much these birds weigh, uh, and we get we get guesses around 20 pounds, 30 pounds. I've had kids say, "Oh, 80 pounds," and it makes us feel really strong, but that's not true. Um, but one of the reasons for that is the lighter you are, the easier it is to fly. So even though you're a big bird, you kind of want to be light, just so you don't have to use as much energy to get up in the air. Um, so some of the cool adaptations with turkey vultures, uh, the really obvious thing that you can see is his bald head there. So he's got this bright red head and he's got no feathers there and he's got feathers everywhere else. Um, the reason for that is kind of gross as with most vulture facts, it's a gross fact, um, is when they're eating that carrion, they'll actually kind of tear it open and they'll stick their whole head in there. And when you do that, you're gonna get pretty gross. You're gonna get all sorts of gross stuff all over your head and trying to get that stuff out of feathers is really hard to do. Uh, but if your head is bald, you can go out in the sun and you can kind of bake it off and then just flick it off with your foot whenever it's dry. Um, and the reason that the head is red is that that's really good to prevent sunburn too, since there aren't any feathers there. Although uh, there are very few feathers there, I should say. Um, one of the other really neat ad adaptations is if you look at his nostrils, you can see straight through to the other side. Um, similarly, um, that is an, is an adaptation because again, when you're eating all sorts of gross stuff. If you get stuck in your nose, it'll just kind of go straight out the other side. But also, turkey vultures have an amazing sense of smell. Most birds have a really poor sense of smell. They've got great eyesight. A lot of them have great hearing, but most of them can't really smell much. Uh, but these guys can actually smell carrion on the ground from way up in the sky. 
and their sense of smell is so good that other vultures who don't have a great sense of smell, like king vultures or black vultures, will follow these guys into uh, to whatever carrion they smell, and the bigger vultures, like king vultures, will actually try to chase these guys away. Uh, black vultures are a similar size, so they can all eat together. Um, another really neat adaptation, and another really gross one, because I love sharing gross facts, uh, <laughs> is if these guys are scared, so if maybe um, a coyote or um, a great horned owl or another predator is going after one of these guys, their main um, method of defense is to throw up. So with, <laughs> they'll actually throw up, and that stuff is really gross, it smells awful, and it's very, very acidic. So if the animal gets it in their eyes or their nose or any other mucous membranes, it'll burn the animal. And it buys the turkey vulture enough time to get away because the other animal's like, I don't, if you're that gross, I don't think I'm gonna go anywhere near you. And <laughs> who really would? Um, the other really, really gross fact that we love sharing with people is since these guys are kind of a warmer weather bird, they need all sorts of ways to stay cool. Um, so one of the things they'll do is they'll spread their wings and they'll, you know, they'll spread their wings to kind of warm up, but they'll also do that to cool down sometimes. But the really gross part is when they're really, really hot, they'll actually poop on their own feet to cool themselves off. Um, so, so they'll defecate kind of forward, and the urates, which are kind of the, the whitish stuff in bird poop, will evaporate off, and as it evaporates off, it carries some of that heat away. Um, so it's kind of gross, but it's a necessity for these guys. Um, fortunately, uh, in the Americas, most of our vulture species are not endangered. Like I said, there's tons of these guys around. Uh, but the African vulture species are very endangered right now. Um, there's a few different reasons for that. Um, some of the reasons are that uh, people will take them for traditional medicines or bushmeat. Um, one of the other things, uh, poachers will actually try to kill off vultures because they warn uh, the game wardens where their, their poaching is taking place because these guys will follow them and then the game wardens will follow the vultures um, and then they'll find the poachers. Um, so it's, it's very critical that uh, we pay attention to vulture conservation right now, especially over in Africa. Um, but like I said, if you see them in around here or anywhere else in the Americas, it's still really, really important to take care of our vultures because they do such a great job and such an important job too. Um, so do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah, why are they called turkey vultures? Well, they're called turkey vultures because their head kind of looks like a male turkey, a little bit. I mean, they're both red. Uh, but they don't have that big waddle like a turkey does, but that's where they get their name from. And you said that they are not endangered. They are not endangered. Like I said, you can see these guys all over the place, um, from southern Canada all the way down to the southern tip of uh, South America. Um, and all sorts of di different ecosystems. I think they're, they, last count, there was over four million of these guys around, so they're doing pretty good. But again, we don't want to get too complacent. And how old is he? We estimate that he's about three years old. Um, again, he came to us from the wild because he was injured. Um, so he has an injury where he wouldn't be able to survive on his own out in the wild. He really can't fly. Um, so he stays here and he gets free food and free housing and free vet care. So it's a pretty good deal. And he gets to hang out and see you guys um, and say hi. Is this as big as he's gonna get? Yes, he is fully grown. Um, so he shouldn't get any larger than this. And how sharp is his beak? His beak is extremely sharp, so with a lot of birds of prey like hawks and owls, you really need to worry about their feet. His feet are pretty weak, but that beak is made for slicing into things. Um, so it's pretty tough, it's, it's pretty sharp, and that's one of the reasons that Nicolette's wearing that glove, because even though Opie knows Nicolette, um, you, know, you don't want to get too complacent, you want to be a little bit cautious just in case. Yeah, it, his beak almost reminds me of a parrot. I mean, not quite, but just... Similar Doesn't shape, look... but this one's a lot sharper. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. can be a little bit more blunt. Um, but even though he has that really sharp beak, um, it's it's still not the strongest as far as um, like jaw power. So sometimes they'll wait for another predator or uh, another carrion eater, so like a coyote or something, to come along and um, kind of tear apart their food a little bit first, and then they'll come in later and grab whatever's left. The easy stuff. How big is a turkey vulture's wingspan? A turkey vulture's wingspan can get up to about um, five feet, six feet. I want to say his is a little bit smaller. He's not the biggest guy out he's there. Like three and a half yeah, something. he's probably around three and a half. And he can't really stretch that one wing out, the one that's no, injured. No, yeah, the left wing doesn't really stretch all the way. It's kind okay. of permanently uh, bent a little bit like that. But he does okay, and he gets around in his enclosure. And as you can see, he can just hang out with us just fine. 
So when you see turkey vultures out in the countryside and you see them just whirling around in the sky, how long can they do that? They, I, I don't know exact am amounts of time, but they can do that for an extremely long time. Because what they're doing when they're circling like that is they're riding updrafts. So that's just wind that's kind of going straight up. So if you watch them for a little while, you'll notice they're not flapping their wings. They really flap their wings when they're doing that. And that means that they can stay aloft for a long, long time because they're not really using energy. And they'll just circle higher and higher and higher, and then they'll just kind of coast on down. And then they'll do the same thing and circle higher and higher and higher again. Um, and the whole time they're doing that, they're sniffing, they're smelling the air, they're smelling the air from different directions, trying to figure out if there's anything on the ground that they might want to go down there and eat. So if you do see a bird uh, circling up in the sky, how can you tell the difference between a turkey vulture and a hawk? So one of the easiest ways to tell the difference, the difference between a turkey vulture and a hawk is, for one, these guys are going to be a little bit bigger, uh, but also when they spread their wings, um, the, the feathers at the end of the wing um, are a little bit separate. So it kind of looks like fingers separated. Um, whereas a hawk, typically, um, it'll look like just one big block. That wing will just be kind of one big triangle there. Um, and again, hawks will flap their wings quite more frequently. Uh, turkey vultures are just going to be um, what's called soaring. They're going to be gliding around up in the air. Can you talk about that hole in his nose again? Yeah, yeah. So, so the reason he has that hole is for, for two different reasons, actually. Um, one is when he's eating all the gross stuff that he loves to eat. Um, if he gets anything kind of up in his nose, it's really easy to clear it out because it'll just go straight out the other side. Uh, but also, because he has that hole there, he can actually suck up a lot more air and get a lot more um, scent particles in there. And because he has such a great sense of smell, the more, you know, the more particles he can get in there, the better he can sort of triangulate where um, anything on the ground is that he might want to eat. Do turkey vultures make any noises? The only noise they really make is hissing. They can, they can hiss a little bit, but they don't, they don't caw, they don't screech, they don't do anything like that. Do they live alone or do, or do, do, bleh, or do they <laughs> live in groups? <laughs> um, typically, they'll, they'll kind of hang out by each other. Um, but, but they don't really... Um, they, they can hang out in really, really big groups. Um, but those groups will kind of be um, almost amorphous and they'll just kind of... Um, uh, individuals will leave and come and go and things like that. How many eggs do they lay at once and how long oh. does it take for them to hatch out? Oh, you know, I, I honestly, I don't remember clutch size off the top of my head. Um, if I had to guess based on similar birds, I would say probably around um, five to eight, but uh, don't quote me on that. And uh, in general, birds of this size, their eggs are going to take a little bit over a month to hatch. So probably about 38 days or so. Uh, but again, both those numbers are estimates based on other birds I, I know of, because off the top of my head, I don't recall turkey vulture um, laying time. And whatever. So how much time would they spend uh, soaring versus roosting or on the ground? <laughs> That's I, my question. Uh, <laughs> I guess it all depends on the type of day it is. I mean, if it's really, really hot out, they might stick to the shade. Um, it depends on how hungry they are. If they've eaten recently, they'll, they'll eat a whole ton of food and they'll kind of gorge themselves. And they'll just sit there for a long, long time for as long as it takes them to digest that food, as long as there's no other threats around and as long as they feel comfortable there. Um, so it's basically up to them. And it, it basically depends on, you know, um, whether they're hungry, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> and where do they typically make nests? Um, up in trees and, and any sort of ledges and things like that. Mm -hmm. It's not How... on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> How old can they get? So out in the wild, they, they would normally get around 16 years or so. Mid, mid to early, early to late teens is pretty good. Um, but under professional care, they can live into their 40s. I think the oldest one I know of um, lived to be about 48. Um, but we just had um, one of our longtime residents uh, unfortunately pass away at the age of 40 last year, Georgette the turkey vulture. A lot of you guys might know her. Um, one of my absolute favorite animals ever to work with. Um, but uh, yeah, she was almost a record holder there. <laughs> wow. Do they have any predators? Um, the predators are, are either bigger birds of prey so things like great horned owls, um, large red-tailed hawks, and things like that, 
or coyotes, um, sometimes even raccoons if a raccoon can sneak up on them. Are they related to turkeys at all? Not at all, no. <laughs> they just kind of look similar a little bit. And how long has Opie been here at Brookfield Zoo? So Opie's been here about two years, or a year and a half, I think. Yeah. Hey, is there anything else you'd like to share? No, I'm just uh, I'm glad that you guys um, spend, <laughs> are spending your time with us today and uh, celebrating International Vulture Awareness Day with us. And thank you for supporting Brookfield Zoo, and thanks for visiting with all of our great animal ambassadors.